Good evening, everybody, and welcome back. Sammy here at Sammy J Stitches, and um, this is a YouTube channel about cross stitch. Today is currently Sunday, October 4th, and I'm excited to share with you the bit of progress that I got done this week. Um, I don't know, I felt like the week started out kind of strong. Not really. Not really. I had a very distracted week this week. I have a lot going on in the personal life. I don't know. It happens sometimes. Um, but so I'm a little, I've been stitching plenty, but it's just been distracted stitching. So I'm not getting those high numbers, those thousands of stitches that I'm really used to getting. Of course, I may have been saying that for the last couple weeks. Time is also kind of like run together. So I know I showed this to you last week. Um, I also didn't get any happy mail this week. That makes me not very happy. I didn't get much of any mail this week. I'm a little perturbed with my mail carrier at the moment. Well, not the mail carrier, my post office. Because um, I was sent a package. Somebody put the wrong box number. But I mean, when you register with a post office, you have to put, you have to list out the names of the people that live there on the box. So if you get a package for box four, and it actually should be for box 14, these are not real numbers, um, you, you know that Jim Bob and Laura Sue live at four, and Samantha lives at 14. You should not deliver Samantha's to Jim Bob. You know, I, I think that's the name I used. <laughs> I don't know. It, I, that's all. That's what happened. It was sent to the wrong box number. They delivered it to said box number, knowing that nobody by my name was there. Even knowing that, like knowing me. That's the thing. I live in a small town. Like the lady knows me. So then the same day I walk in a couple hours later and she's like, so do those other people still live at such as, because my brother-in-law used to be on my box and they have the same last name. And so she's like, cause we got a package, but I was thinking they don't live here anymore. Blah, blah, blah. And I said, well, was it for Samantha James? Cause I knew to expect the package. And she was like, yeah. I said, no, that's me. And I live at my box. It still has my name on my box. And she's like, oh, okay. So she went to look for it and they had given it to box 185. They had given it to the other box, Jim Bob's box. And when they called Jim Bob and asked him, you know, about the package, he's like, oh no, I didn't get it. Well, of course he's not going to claim he got it when there's stuff in there that he may want. And trust me, in that particular package, there was. So I'm a little frustrated with my post office. I feel like why have a system in place if you're just going to ignore it, right? Okay, moving on. I also haven't gotten any happy mail this week. That was my point. I showed this to y'all last week because I did record my floss tube a little late, but because it's beautiful and because it's part of this week, here's Anzac again. Anzac is by Long Dog Samplers. It is on a 32 count Lugana from Mystic Fabrics. I believe it's called Reflection. And um, I'm doing it kind of in my own method of colorway, just with DMCs. I worked on this on Sunday because I was just trying to finish up some stitches I needed for something. I need to write down what the somethings I was working on were. Because that was a long week ago. What is this thing? I want to know what this thing is. These butterflies will have back stitching on them. Pattern Keeper does not do back stitching. Um, so I figure once I'm done with the project, I'll go back and do the back stitching. There's not a lot in this project, but there is some. There's a needle just hanging there. Okay. The next thing I worked on. Let me. Do I have my homework sheet with me? I did not make it out of the house with all the things today. So there's no telling. No, it doesn't look like it. Okay. I worked on Mini Alice and a Dolly Dream because last Sunday was supposed to be my um, hey day. 
every Sunday is supposed to be. And I was trying to get back into that. Couldn't find Once Upon a Fairy Tale. Finally found it. It fell between the shelf that I keep a lot of my stitching stuff on and the desk that's right next to it. It fell kind of in between. It was in its baggie and everything, so it's fine. But I didn't have it here at work with me. So I was like, well, we'll keep with the Hade and I'll just work on Alice. And I'm sure I fit her into something somewhere, but the main point was I worked on her and I got 300 stitches put in. Um, I probably should have gotten more than 300 stitches, but again, this week, easily distracted, not getting started on stuff till late. Okay. Next, I've got to kind of hurry this along. It's Actually, you know what? I'm going to pause. I'm going to do some other stuff I need to do and I will come back and finish this video. All right, I'm back. It has been a few hours. I keep getting distracted, but <clears throat> let's let's get out of this. Okay, so the next thing I worked on on Monday, yes, Monday, was just going to throw stuff all over the shack. It's cool. Um, Shores of Hawker and Hollow. I did, <clears throat> I had to work on this all day Monday and even a little bit of Tuesday because um, I had to put a thousand stitches in. And like I said, I haven't been stitching my normal like thousand stitches a night. So here's where it got to. I mean, I filled in a lot down here. Um, and I focused here, even though I could finish the words, that would be nice. But I focused down there because um, one of the prompts, and the prompt was only 300 stitches, but. Um, it was just easier to stick with what I was doing. But one of the prompts was to work with no white or black, period. And so I just worked on filling in this this stuff. Um, I did get a little filled in in the sun also. But I'm getting really close to finishing this block. Um, this is Shores of Hawker and Hollow by Carriage House Samplings. Um... This is on 32 Count Jobelin in Freya from Under the Sea Fabrics. It's a beautiful, like, blue and green. It really reminds me of water, especially, like, a murky water. Um, so, and on, if you are new here, welcome. But I am not doing the entire thing. I am doing, let's see. I'm going to pull up a picture real quick. I really, part of me thinks I should like record this in Zoom so I could just pull up the different pictures and stuff as I'm talking. Too many people have messaged me on Facebook recently. I've got to close out a bunch. Okay. Just so I could tell you which blocks. Which one is yours of Hawk Run Hollow? Okay, so... <clears throat> The original um, pattern, do you remember when people used to do this all the time? <laughs> I still do. It's four of these blocks across the top, one of these blocks right underneath, a double block, so it's one block, but it takes up the same space as two blocks in the middle, then another single block, and then four blocks at the bottom. So I this is block one in the top corner on the pattern and on here. Um, I'm going to do the big block directly underneath this. So the square number five that would be here, I'm not going to put here. Um, I'm going to do the big block across these two. And right here, I'm going to do block number seven. Because um, those are my three favorite and the three that I feel... Um, so I'm making this for someone else. I'm making it as a memorial piece for somebody that passed away that was spent most of their life in the Navy. So, you know, uh, this says light the way come what may, and then, uh, and has the lighthouse, which is her favorite. The big block has like a ship and a compass and an anchor. Anchor is really symbolic of the Navy. It says, I will wait for thee. And then the last block, um, that I'm going to do says in memory of I'm going to read what it says. It says, in memory of Lieutenant Jacob Pomfrey, Pom Pomeroy, um, anchored in the, I don't know, it's too small, I can't read it. Let me see if I can zoom in. Anchored in the Haven something, 
May 7th, 1745. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to have it say in memory of and his rank and name, um, which it's her dad and then anchored in whatever that says, um, and, and the date of his death. So I think it'll be a neat little memorial piece when I get done with it. So it should be, let's see, let's fold that in half and then we'll go here. It should be about that wide ish, you know, and then double this because the, the blocks are the same going down. So it'll be a perfect square and then I'll have fabric left over. So <clears throat> that is that. I used it, the thousand prompts for School of Magical Stitches. Um, I was able to somehow fit, like Atlantis was pretty easy because you got the C and Snow White, um, I don't remember how we fit all of them, but we did, we did. Um, so that's, that's the one I used for all thousand stitches. And then I also used it for Something that opens because these windows can open. Something with a door because the lighthouse would obviously have a door. And <clears throat> there's one more. I had to go back a week and do something. I don't remember. But I, I did three prompts for Crystal Academy on it. Four prompts for School of Magical Stitches. One prompt for um daily 30 so it, it went a long ways it's a it's a good piece for that um in my opinion any of the hawker and hollows are great for fitting prompts i know that when we did the homework video last week jesse was able to make most things fit on um halloween at hawker and hollow <clears throat> these are just really good pieces and they stitch up nicely they're they're charted i want to say in npis uh, so the DMC conversion is kind of mm, not great. Um, like most of it is, but those rocks were a little, I mean, they could have been better, but um, yeah. And so uh, there's a lot of solid stitching. I mean, the one square with the, um, I'm just going to pull this up over here with the ship or not the ship with the memory and memory of it is almost full coverage so let me go down here click that i'm getting there i have a lot of whips y'all for real okay i wish i would have just done this from the beginning <laughs> okay so i'm doing whoop, this block this block and this block and so if you see, oh, zoom in, that one is almost full coverage. So, and I still can't read it. I think it says anchored in the haven of rest, May 7th. So I'll put anchored in the, ha the haven of rest, October something. I will look it up. So, <clears throat> That is my Shores of Hawker and Hollow piece. And it's like, I have all these pieces and sometimes I feel like it's been so long since I worked on them. I want to pull them out. I don't want to stop. But then there's other pieces that I want to get to. It's a mess, y'all. I want to stitch all the things. I want to stitch all the time. And I just, there are not enough hours in the day. All right. So <clears throat> the other thing is Tuesday was September 29th. So, I need to take a drink. I've got like a catch in my throat. So, Tuesday was the 29th. And <clears throat> I, I, every 29th this year, I have started a new project. I think I might have missed one. And the um so it's a <clears throat> event in virtual stitchers it's called leap into a new start because this year was leap year so every month had a 29th which doesn't happen every year so sleep into a new start and most months i just kind of i either have it draw a number and i go to my um spreadsheet and go for that number 
or I randomly pick out of a drawer. Or what, sometimes it's based on an event going on that month, whatever is easiest. But this month, because I ha I now have uh, YouTube memberships, the join button is down below if you're interested. Um, the, I have three tiers. <clears throat> There's a $1.99 tier, a $2.99 tier, and a $5.99 tier. So, or it might be $4.99 tier. Anyways, it's nothing that's going to break the bank. It's once a month. Um, on the lowest tier, I, I do semi-daily vlogs. I, I promise three, two to three a week. I've been doing them almost every day. Um, the middle tier, um, you then in, get entered into a giveaway once or twice a month. So far it's just been once, but it, last month it was only a half a month. Um, and I will do a specialty vlogs like a stash dive or, um, how I kit up or, you know, how I organize just those, those things that, that video is just about that. It's not a daily vlog. It's not my whips, nothing like that. And then the third tier, um, we're going live. The goal is twice a month right now. We're only promising once a month. Um, <clears throat> we actually just did one this last Saturday. So I think our next one will be October 17th. Yeah. Um, so it, it, we have lives there. I have a giveaway there and, um, so I, I, to get my members involved, I put up polls and stuff like that. And I put up a poll and <clears throat> I had the kids pick out, I think it was five kitted up projects that they really liked. And then I let the members vote and it was a tie. So it was a tie between Sh Shangri-La by Kesslin's or Birds to the Bell by Lindy Stitches. Um, <clears throat> there was also a few votes for... I think it was a Halloween one, like life's a, life's a witch or something like that, but it did. The other two were tied. And so, but when they commented, um, they talked about Shangri-La being so pretty. So that's the one I went with. <clears throat> so this was my new start on Tuesday. This is Shangri-La by Kesslins. I'll pull up the picture in just a minute. Isn't that gorgeous? Oh my goodness. It just that shape for whatever reason just gets me. I don't know what it is about butterflies that I just adore. Um, so this is on 40 count Newcastle linen from Zweigart, um, in Ash Rose. It's actually kind of nice to stitch on, even though it's a linen. Um, and you can see there are some pretty significant slubs in there, but so far, like I haven't messed up the holes. Because there's none that are like super thin. Because that's what really gets me about linen is when one of like it'll have one really super thin strand and then one kind of thicker strand. And you tend to miss like over go over too many. So anyway, 40 count. It's gorgeous. Um, this is actually a pretty big piece. So the the 40 counts making it look a little more dainty, which is really nice. Um, there is already an error in here, but it was one I could just work around because this is one stitch too short. So I just found a line in my pattern. I can't, can I show you that, um, I felt like I could mark it out and it wouldn't affect the look of it. And, and what I do is on my good notes where I keep my pattern, I, need to go back. I just make like a red mark and leave myself notes. That's one of the things that's nice about the digital. And then I can go back and erase the notes if anything changes. Oops. So I'm going to show you just a tiny piece of the pattern here. Uh, so I forgot this one. Well, I mean, who knows where I actually forgot it, but this is where I found the error when I was counting and it says error that's missing. So then up here, I'm like, I can get rid of this line and everything else will line up how it's supposed to. So <clears throat> that's the way I make little notes to myself. I kind of enjoy it. So this is the pattern. 
Isn't it gorgeous? And, and so you could see where that butterfly is already starting to come into play. So I, I started in the center at, at the top most. So, um, so I kind of started, it, it was a little off center, but there, I had enough fabric on each of the sides that it didn't really matter. So I started up at that very point and then worked my way around. So that is what I am working on. This too is, um, this one is charted with Gloriana silks, gentle arts, thread gathers, and yeah, and thread gather. So obviously I don't have any Gloriana. I probably could have done the gentle art, but at the time I just didn't. So, and I couldn't find a good conversion. So I literally went to my floss wall, picked a couple colors that I liked for the main um, you know, like the main parts of it, the, the dark pink in the, in the flower and the dark green. I'm like, which ones do I want? And then I just kind of match stuff up to it. So I went with this color chart and so you could see that that worked really well for that dark pink. So then I could put this light pink in there. It's probably a little lighter than what they charted, but I, I like the contrast between them. And then just greens that would all work together. So I think it's going to be absolutely gorgeous and lovely. And that's where I'm at. Okay. Lots of blabbering about that one. I'm doing a little bit better about, you know, talking this week. Okay. <clears throat> the next thing I worked on. And part of this. I had... I had considered pulling this chart out for a, a couple of my prompts, but I think in the end on the homework video, I opted to go with something else. But then the October monthly challenge came out for Cheryl and we are uh, stitching costumes for each other. So what, what you do is you go into somebody else's post on the monthly home or event and um you say i'm going to stitch you such and such costume and there's a list to pick from and each of those costumes has a prompt right so then you tell you post on that person you post your start picture you put you say i'm going to stitch you this costume um for halloween and then you do 500 stitches and you post the ending photo and then you go to yours um and say, I made a costume for such and such. And we've got to do this 10 times this month. I think you only have to do five. Um, you, there's an award. There, <clears throat> there's a special reward for 10. I'm going to try and do as many as I can. Because I find it fun. And I want to make sure that I include as many people as possible. Because um, I know that it's instinct when you go into those events to find your friends. And don't get me wrong, I, I'm, I'm stitching for my friends first, yes. But I also want to include people that maybe I don't know them. And maybe this is a way I could get to know them. So, <clears throat> so I decided to start with Jessie Marie. Because, duh. And, you know, Jessie Marie is a huge, she loves Halloween. And she and I actually have a Halloween project in common. So one of the costumes that you can stitch is a ghost costume. <clears throat> and for to stitch the ghost costume, you need a project with something spooky. So I figured I would pull out my Halloween project that matches Jessie's Halloween project and stitch her a ghost costume. So I pulled out Thine is the Trick in the Treat. And... Um, I think, I know I had to do 500 stitches in this. I think I might have done more for something else. I'm not quite sure. Uh, well, um, no, I can't look. It's on the iPad. Then I had to come up here and frog because I should have frogged it before I took my first picture. I had it marked on my chart from the last time I worked on it. Please frog this. There's an issue that same way that I just showed you and I forgot to do it. So then I had to stitch, focus on stitching downward so that I could come back and frog that later. Um, because I just find that easier. So I started over here and I got these bats and then this around the bats and the star, the O, the L, and then all of this. So 
I think I had some of it before, but most of it is new. And I start on that, that little guy there. So this is where I'm at. I'm, I'm all the way to, th this is all three pages. Um, now I'm just getting to the bottom of the third page and then I'll be halfway done because we have another three down at the bottom. And I'm with Jessie on this because I was watching her video literally, I think the day after I stitched this. And <clears throat> I love the spiders too. I hate spiders in real life. Cannot stand them. They give me the heebie-jeebies. Like, I'm always afraid one's going to just, like, jump out at me. Um, but the way they have the back stitch and everything, just, it makes them look so good. I just really like the way they turned out. I was also watching her video, and she is doing this witch in C310, C310 which is the Etoile version of 310. And I really like that idea. But one, I already have the witch stitched. And two, the witch isn't necessarily my favorite part. So, what is my favorite part? And I'm going to do the same thing where I stitch it with the specialty toile. Do I not have a copy of the cover photo? Yes, I do. I have to. Oh, okay, there it is. Um, is that black cat? That black cat is going to be sparkling. So, I'm excited about that. Um, I kind of like the witches' huts, too. I like everything about this. That spider web. Do you see that spider web? That is, like, the most awesome spider web ever. Oh, my God. I love this piece. I love it so much. And the fact that it's all in one color, even though the color's black, um, it just it stitches up so fast. I always feel like, it, even if I just work on it for part of a night, I feel like I get good progress on it. Um, yeah. So, I'm really excited about this one. Um, yeah, that, that spider web may need to be sparkly, too. I, I think that may have to happen. Okay, so, that is what I worked on. I uh, I worked on it for Crystal Academy because an animal that has claws would be that cat. Um, I know the monthly... Cheryl's group. By the way, Cheryl's group is um, the Cross Stitchers Journal and Daily 30 group. Um, it is a closed group. It is not accepting new members at this time. If that ever changes, I will be sure and let y'all know. But it is a challenge group. I mean, uh, it, she started out with just the challenge being stitch on something for 30 minutes every day and post it. And then it just kind of developed into more. And, and she's got some, I mean, interesting ideas, unique ideas, um, the effort she puts into some of her prompts, like the stories and knowing all the information. It's just, it's amazing. Absolutely amazing, Cheryl. And I love being a member there. And I know you watch my channel, so you know, I love you. She's, she's a great friend too. She's very sweet. Okay. Um, so moving on. Um, I also, you're probably going to start seeing a rash of new starts. Partly, uh, one of the reasons I don't start a lot of things is I always feel like I need a purpose to a new start. I need a good reason. So leap into a new start, that's a good reason for me. A sal with a friend is a good reason for me. <clears throat> um, but... I'm planning to join, there's a group on Facebook called uh, No New Starts 2021, and they are, you'll have to go, they've got all kinds of rules, but it's actually something like, it's going to have giveaways, and there's going to be like a pot where you can, you know, get like a grand prize at the end of the year, if you could stick it out the entire year for No New Starts, and I do not foresee me being able to make it, I can't remember if I talked about this last week, but anyway. Um, I don't foresee me being able to make it the full year. Mania, it has my heart, man. I, I have done Mania every year since I became active in the stitching community. And even like this year, I did it on a lower scale, but I still did it. And so I think not participating may be difficult for me. I know that I could do like a whip mania or there's, but it's Stitch Mania, man. It's supposed to be new starts. So, I, I don't know if I'll make it past May. We'll see. But, 
I have the best of intentions, right? And uh, words, what are the words that I want to say right now? And so I'm going to go into it with the intention of not starting anything. But I was looking at my spreadsheet, which I do not have up. So I don't know why I keep looking over there. And I have very few smalls right now. Let me see. I can pull it up here. This is the video of looking at my phone. That's, that's just what this has become. <laughs> I have, I use numbers on iPhone and I have what I call my stitch brain and it's got several different spreadsheets in it, like my Whipgo board. By the way, that's another, that's my second bingo. So I will be starting a new Haid soon for that reason. I told you, I just had to have a reason. Um, and I have totally digressed. So this is not show all the whips, then talk about all the things. This is all over the place, but I like it. I'm down for it. Okay, so according to this, and if anybody doesn't know, <laughs> And I, I don't know where this came from. I got it from Jesse. How this came about, I couldn't tell you. But we have a L-I-M-H rating. Now this stands for Link is my homeboy. <laughs> um, Heather Passmore, she created this system. And I don't, I don't know if she was the original creator or anything like that. I know that Stephanie Kine has a group called Stitch From Stash and they use this kind of as what is a small or as, as um, um, a grading grid I think so that you know how much your whip is worth anyway if you take the height stitches by the width stitches you know because every pattern has it um I, I don't know why I'm looking around like I have a pattern here but it, let's say <clears throat> it's 150 stitches by 250 stitches you add those together so then we're at three four hundred stitches and you divide by two so then it'd be 200 stitches is your rating well then a excuse me as small as anything less than a, a hundred when you get that number that final number anything less than a hundred is a small 100 to 200 is a medium 200 to 300 is a large and BAP for me is 300 plus. Um, Jessie has a whole nother category after that because Lord knows that woman has some huge projects. But um, so what I do is I have it keep track of what, of how many of each of those projects I have. And currently I have eight smalls, 23 mediums, 17 larges, and four BAPs. Y'all, who needs four BAPs in their life? Nobody, but... I'm down for it. Um, but I do feel like I need a few more smalls for next year. Plus, of those smalls, here, let me sort by edit. I'm going to sort this. Can I do that? Call in action. Sort ascending. Okay. Okay. Of those smalls, I have, oh, them all. It's still got plenty. I don't know how that thing's a small. It doesn't feel small. Kitty with Duck will be done by the end of the year. Leaves of Change has a good chance of being done by the end of the year. Um, Tired Trio, maybe, maybe not. Um, BK Monthly September, December, um, that's my Britter Cup Kitty waiting on Santa. I mean, there's a possibility, but we're not going to hang on it. Irony, I've barely gotten started. And Ew People, I've barely gotten started. So of those eight smalls, I'm going to finish. Oh, oh, and home. Home is slated for finish that stitch December. So of the eight, two to four of them could be finished by the end of the year. Two of them will definitely be finished by the end of the year. Two to three more could be finished by the end of the year. So that's leaving me with three, four smalls for next year. That's just unacceptable, especially when I have... Um, several smalls kitted up like the word plays actually it says the word plays are medium which kind of surprises me but whatever I have the word plays I have the um year of celebrations from hands-on design I, I just have I have some smalls that I need to get in my in my active whips so 
all that being said, you're going to see some more new starts soon. Um, one of those is right now. I started this because Crystal Academy needed me to have something winter, wintry, snow or ice. And I know that on the homework video, or when I first told my team, I was like, yeah, sure. No problem. I definitely have one of those. And then I went looking. I don't. And how is it that I don't have something wintry? I mean, I have that Christmas one, but one, it wasn't active. And two, I mean, other than the fact that he's sitting there with the fireplace on, it doesn't depict anything wintry. So I needed a winter piece. I want more smalls in my stash for next year, even though I just found out it's a medium. And um, why not? New start. So I was also able, oh, okay. So I started on Thursday. Yeah, Thursday. A day when I was home, I actually like started something and stitched on it. Are you shocked? Pick your job off the floor. You're drooling. Okay. <laughs> so I started January wordplay from With Thy Needle. And I was also able to use this as a costume. I want to say I did this for Sarah. I made her a fairy. Um, because it has something with wings. It has these little birds. Okay. And uh, so I needed 500 stitches in it for that, 500 stitches in it for Myth and Magic, uh, 300 for Crystal Academy. Now, granted, these are all being stitched simultaneously. So I put 525 stitches in it. Um, this too is, okay, so completely gentle arts. Um... But the reason I didn't necessarily use the gentle arts, even though I may have had them in my stash, is because like that and maybe six stitches over here is all I use of that color. I don't want to pull in an entire skein of gentle arts for that, especially when the conversion is such a solid color. Now, there are two cases in here where I would have pulled the gentle arts had I actually had it. And that is because... Um, in order to create it for this, it's a blend. According to, there's like a chart of gas to DMC. And if it's a slash, you're supposed to blend it. If it's a comma, you can use either one. So, and actually the second color I thought was a slash, but it was actually a comma, but whatever. I don't mind blending some threads, um, which I guess I haven't done that one yet because I don't see the other blend, but this blend this blend i found interesting because when i picked them up the colors it was like this really gray blue color and um like a darker green color and i was like how do those go together because they do not look like they would look good together and then i started stitching with them and you can barely even tell it's a blend but it made a very beautiful bird let me see how close i can get that can you see that I love it. I love that color. So I have, I have a ton of ga uh, gentle arts threads and I, but I didn't have the two that I would have pulled in order to not have to do a blend, but I don't mind doing a blend. It's just at that point, I'm like, well, that could actually be worth pulling this game for. I digress. That's just how my brain worked when I was kidding this up. So, um, this is all DMC also. So that's where I got to. I'm not sure how I feel about this color, but I think it's in all the charts from With Thy Needle. And since I've already done, I did one of the months, June maybe. Yeah, June. And then I've started May. May's down here. That's a pretty good start. It's like fairly close to done. But, um, and I've used it. I just figure I'll, I'll stick with it even though it's not my favorite color on here. Um, it doesn't look bad though. And this fabric is 28 count Monaco that I coffee tea dyed using uh, the Priscilla and Chelsea method. And I just, I think it came out beautifully, just absolutely beautifully. And I'll tell you something. I've only coffee tea dyed a couple times, but there for a little while, my husband was taking a thermos of coffee 
with him to work. And my husband likes some dark coffee. He wants that. He wants you to have to put a spoon in it and spoon stands up. Like it's thick. It's, you could almost chew it. Um, it gives him heartburn. So he's not doing it so much anymore. But when he was, sometimes he wouldn't drink the entire thermos. And I'm like, that's a lot of coffee going to waste. So, um, I ended up putting it in a different container and I saved it. And then I just heated it up on the stove and added some tea bags to it, to this super dark coffee and dyed fabric with it. We're in a waste household. Not really. I waste all the time, but I thought it was pretty awesome thinking on my part. So there is that. Voila. That is all the stitching that I did this week. I started to pull out something new or not new. I don't want to throw that word out there because I had two new starts this week and I no. but I started to pull out another whip that I needed to work on for something or other. Cause you know, I'm in like 50,000 groups and I have to do all the things. Um, I'm kind of killing out on that. I'll be, I'll be real with you. Um, there's certain ones that hold my attention better than others. Let's just put it that way. So I was going to pull out something else and start stitching on it last night. However, for Crystal Academy, one of the things I needed to do is diamond paint because, um, they have, they're all inclusive. So they have prompts for knitting, crochet, diamond painting, French knots, beads, you just never know what they're going to pull out of their hat. And diamond painting is something I have that, well, I don't have. My daughter has that I can use for that prompt to help my team out. So, um, last week I showed you, I think I showed you, that I worked on a stitch with her. I thought I was going to have to do two diamond painting prompts. So, I'm like, we need to do 1200 on stitch and 1200 on your other project. But my team stepped up and I only have to do one. So... But she had already pulled out, put up stitch and pulled out her horse, which I don't have a good picture of because this is all we took so that you could see where the paint, the diamond painting was being done. But those are the legs of the horse and that's kind of the tail and it's, it's pretty artsy, like almost like water paint. And then we put in 1200 diamonds all along the bottom, but... At some point, before we got her a better method for keeping the diamonds, um, some of them got spilled, and so she's missing a couple colors. But this chart in particular, and I don't, I don't think it shows on the picture, um, has the DMC numbers on it, so you can order more diamonds via, like, AliExpress, or there's, like, this Cooper Diamond painting place. I don't know. There's a lot of them. So then you could just order a new baggie of each of those colors. Not all charts come like that. So I really appreciate the ones that have the DMC conversion because it's not just this random color number. So um, while we were stitching, I knocked over a thing of diamonds all over the floor. And I have hardwood floors, so we were able to get most of them up, but it's still, we were worried about it not being enough for her to finish out the project. Like I said, she was already missing a couple colors before we started. And in the process of cleaning up the one, I knocked over another one. I'm so horrible. So after we got to our 1200 diamond painting on that, we decided to scrap that one. It's not worth it anymore. Um, now we will save the diamonds because it does have the DMC coloring um, for maybe in the future she may need them. Uh, and we do have an organization, uh, like a storage system now, but I was like, we will just buy a new diamond painting. So that's what we're going to do. We're going to pick out a couple new ones, order them from Amazon. They're really relatively, un in bleh. they're relatively inexpensive if you pick the right ones. So, I mean, it really is about your preference. It's about size, things like that. But most of the ones we pick out and order are 10 bucks or less. I think one of the ones she did at some point was like 16 there are, I mean, they go upwards of 30 plus. I do know that Heaven and Earth Designs um, is starting to print canvases with their um, their patterns on the canvas printed on it, um, but it's just the canvas. And then you have to go and order the 
drills, which is the little diamonds, from somewhere else. Um, and again, it depends on size. So I saw some for 30, I saw some for 106. I mean, it really depends on what your preference is. My daughter would like for her to get a diamond painting that I have a stitching pattern for and us do it simultaneously. The problem with that is you can diamond paint way faster than you can stitch. And you know how heaven and earth designs are. I have so many on the go. So I don't know how soon that will be happening, but um, I am enjoying sitting down and diamond painting with her every weekend. So it's pretty cool. All right. I actually managed to blabber a decent amount this week. And so I'm ready to let y'all go and upload this. I hope everybody is having a great stitching week. Thank you so much for, um, if you're new here, for joining me. I hope that you enjoyed what you saw and we'll come back next week. Um, I do um, post on a regular basis every week. Usually you'll see it Monday morning, every once in a while, you know, we had to change it up a bit, but every week. And if you've been here and you've dealt with my crazy for episode after episode, I want you to know how much I truly appreciate you. Thank you all for liking, subscribing, commenting, and there's something else that I'm forgetting that you're allowed to do that shows me how much you love my videos, and I really, really appreciate it. So see you all next week, and happy stitching.